Just fucking do it. Subscribe now. Good evening. The, um, before I forget, I went back and looked at your husband's file just to refresh my memory. We have a young lady here uh, that her husband came a couple years ago, both to the hardcore and the regular seminar. And um, somehow the Carlings had poor taste to befriend them. And so they're friends with the Carlings, which are the superstar couples that I've referred to in the last several years, who happen to be from Dundee, 25 miles up the road, who now live in, amongst other places, Dubai and got a, a bunch of houses. But more importantly, and I wouldn't bring it up, um, she came because she saw how successful the Carlings were. But more importantly to herself, she saw how successful her husband's been. And uh, during the seminar, we'll, we'll talk about that. But now, as I told at least one of you on the one-on-ones, I see a, a lot of people either f through third-party referrals, as they're called in sales, uh, or second generation, the kids of um, successful mentees. Uh, more third-party referrals than uh, second generation. Uh, but I'm not going to be around enough, long enough to be a third generation. This will be a, a transformational week, even for the most ignorant of you in the group. The, uh, we have a 100% success rate. Uh, some make hundreds of millions and even billions, and some only make five or ten million. But we have a 100% success rate, even if you don't follow the steps, which most of you won't. Most of you won't. And that's the first of at least 100 or 300 times I'm going to say it. But you're not going to do this. And contrary to what you might think, I'm not saying this to use reverse psychology. It's because you're not. You're going to find the emotional sacrifice too great. Now, the gentleman with the full beard, is that a full beard? Uh, uh, reminds me of uh, a rabbi that came to the seminar, seminar and the hardcore, who's now the only rabbi in Saudi Arabia. He set up household in Niam. Remember I said five or six years ago, if you spoke Arabic, you shouldn't come to the seminar, and if you're here, you should leave tonight and take a one-way ticket to go to the kingdom. And many of you have written that you've read all my shit. Well, you're a fucking liar. You haven't. Well, he has a full like that, and uh, he is um, uh, currently, uh, actually, he's fighting with the uh, Israeli, Israeli Defense Forces, because he's a major or something. And he went there, and he set up um, the only synagogue, I think, uh, in the kingdom. And he's the head rabbi. But he had a full beard like that, and plus some other accoutrements hanging from his head and other shit. But, um, Nothing that you're going to hear starting tonight is any different than is free on the website. You're going to see a slide tomorrow morning. A, a, a nice kid asked me on one of my interviews because I see people when I'm out traveling around the world for 20, 30 minutes for free. And he says, why do you do this? You haven't had to work in decades and all the material is free on the website. Because I want to take the last excuse away from you, sorry cunts, why you didn't do it. For some of you that you think you need a personal experience, you don't. But you'll find that out. You'll figure that out about noon tomorrow. And that's the world we live in. And that's why it's the perfect environment for QLA. It can't get much better. I keep saying that. And every time a new war breaks out, it can't get much better. I'm hoping that while I'm still alive, not giving seminars, that I'm just going to have robots here. And for those of you that can afford the robots, you send them to the motherfucking class where they're going to tell you what Jesus knows, Allah. Or my perfect scenario is you just send the fucking money and don't come to the seminar. That's the perfect scenario. But I might not live long enough for that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to live long enough for the robots. The, um, 
a young man, I believe, not a, it was a young man, unless he was an it, and he, he fooled me, uh, said, if you were me, I wasn't such a young man, it was actually an old fart with a pot belly. Uh, well, there's a few of those. I think it was you. If you were me, and what would you better? And I say, the, uh, we have data, tons of data to show, illustrate uh, beyond a, uh, any other thought process, the people that take the most copious notes and ask the fewest questions are the most successful. How many of you, English is not your primary language? You're fucked, but anyway. That's too bad. We stopped asking that question about 16, 18 years ago. Um, did you hear that now? <sighs> the most copious notes, most of you aren't going to take any notes. Now, even though I'm making a big deal of it right now, uh, if somebody will remind me the morning of the third day, and then I used to go back and I check your notebooks. Even when I tell you this, you're still not going to take notes. Why is that? Because you're a pretender. And one in ten of you are going to go back uh, and, you know, um, oh, excuse me, one in ten of you will, will remember what I said, even though I'm going to say it almost every day. Uh, those that ask the fewest questions do the best. In years gone by, I used to just look at your faces and I can pick um, who's going to ask the most questions. I used to help myself with cheat notes. So I'd look at your files. And I can tell about your background, your education, et cetera. Who's going to ask the most questions? And fail. But I don't do that now. I'm a grandfather. I'm a kinder, gentler person. I don't do that now. And there are such things as stupid questions. I don't give a fuck if you can't speak English. You're going to hear Marcus Bauer in two, three days on a webinar say that when he came here 12 years ago, um, he asked me, somehow he got through the, on the phone, does it matter that I, maybe I can only understand partial, uh, partially what you're going to say? And he says, Mr. Pena lied and said, you don't have to understand anything I say. All you have to do is follow the steps. Well, all you have to do is follow the steps. And even though you don't understand what I say, if you follow the steps, you succeed. But 98% of everything it takes to be successful in this program which countless thousands of people, remember, 99.9% .9 of the people that have succeeded with QLA have never met me. 99.9% .9 of the people that have succeeded with QLA have never been to a seminar. Now, admittedly, knowingly, I've not produced a billionaire that hasn't come to the seminar. But I've certainly produced a whole bunch of people that you're going to hear from, there's a 23-year-old kid I'm going to talk to you about tomorrow who's, uh, uh, you're going to see some slides in the beginning, after I pontificate a little, that the last deals that came across my desk is closed in calendar year 2023. And they come in a flurry. Uh, and there's four examples, I believe, I don't believe, I know, one of which is a 23-year-old kid with about, a, with the greatest respect, 50 IQ, he's listening. Uh, Closed its third deal on the cusp. I've uh, never been to the seminar. He, he says he's covered most of the material, but since he can't read, I, I find that I'm a little skeptical. And then there's you. And you'll be able to check off the box. I speak English. I read and write English. I've got this degree and that degree. And my wife says she's supportive. My family says they're supportive, eh, and I can go on and on. And then 15, 18, 20 months from now, you're going to go to Reddit. Is this still a Reddit? You're going to go to Reddit and say, QLA doesn't work. But all I ask you to add is an answer that says, because I'm a big vagina cunt. That's all I ask you to do. Of course, you won't do that, will you? This program is not for everybody, but for those um, when they were interviewing uh, the quarterback of the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, 
after he won from coming down 10 down to winning in overtime, he said, uh, we wanted it more than the San Francisco 49ers. How many of you wanted more? We'll, we'll find out. We used to have a survey um, that Jack Welch invented. I'm not, I, it wasn't my idea. Um, and it's one of the things that he was famous for. They used to call him Nitron Jack because when he'd take over companies, when he was the head of this, uh, GE, General Electric, for 25 years, he'd fire all the people and keep the buildings. And they called him Nitron Jack because a nitron bomb doesn't destroy bricks and mortar, but it evaporates the people. So when Nitron Jack took over a business, let's say there was 25 employees like that are in here, uh, at the end of 30 days, each one of the people sitting in the audience, your colleagues, as they say here, would rate all other 24. And so he would rate the 24 that are in the room, and the guy with the long beard would rate the other 24. And he'd do that three months in a row. And the bottom 20%, reality was the bottom 40%, but in his book, he only says 20. The bottom 20% would be fired. I still use that system. It works like, I can't, I, I can't give it a, a metaphor good enough. There's a new management style that's been in about the last 18 to 24 months. It's called outcome management. Netflix uses it. Siemens just adopted it, amongst others. And you all run divisions. And your sales quota for Six months is 10 million, and you're whatever, whatever, okay? And that's it, that's the end of the meeting, sales meeting. You have a piece of paper that you unfold, kind of like a James Bond movie. You unfold it and it says 10 million. And uh, okay, well, you're thinking, I can easily make that quote in a year, and then it's a quarter. And then at the end of the quarter, I don't tell you how to do it. I don't tell, you know, as long as it's moral, ethical, and legal, it's up to you. But on day one after the quarter is over, if your numbers aren't what your outcome goal was, you're fired. Now, rather than go through that process, in recent months, Elon the Musk, who's the flavor of the day still, fired 95% of his Indian employees. He didn't even go, by, he didn't even go through the, 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 the regimen of doing the test. I could have told him that. Sam and I run a pretty big organization in India. And we're, we're swinging just a little bit back from the wokeness. Just a little bit back. Not enough. I'm not sure I'll, I'll live long enough to see the full swing back. I gave a political meeting here about a month ago. And I told the, um, the current uh, administration of the SNP, in ancient times, most of you would have been burned at the stake and killed. Most of you should have been burned at the stake, or more importantly, your parents should have been burned at the stake. Because how's your program worked out so far? For those of you that have high and lofty degrees, I'm jealous because I don't have high and lofty degrees. I just have one little measly, measly one from a, also ran university. Oh, it'll be harder for you. For those of you that have 60, 70, 80 IQ, it'll be easier for you. Once you get over the fact that you've only got 60, 70, 80 IQ, which some of you will never get over. Now, all this I see on my website, don't I? Have I given any new information yet? Mm -mm. Makes you paid all this money. Now, I was surprised, and it was brought to our attention by MI5, one of our staff, who's uh, other than MI5, uh, she's our, our uh, in front of house person, right? Okay. Uh, that um, we were in the newspapers a couple of days ago. I didn't know anything about it because our plane almost fucking crashed. That's why we ran out of fucking fuel. And Sally and I are trotting down to uh, London for ba Valentine's Day, amongst other things. And uh, we take off at Aberdeen and we go up to what, 35,000 feet or something like that. And now we're flying like this. My lunch and fucking champagne, all this shit is 
And I said, Sally, you notice this? And she said, yeah, everything's okay. The flight attendants are going, yeah, 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 yeah. And then we swing back around and we land in Edinburgh, which is only about 80 you know, miles from here. Because we didn't, they didn't tell us exactly that we ran out of fuel. But uh, they had an electrician problem, electrical problem, or uh, something. And so, but then uh, we were informed, and then I read about it uh, with the link that you sent me, Sally. That, um, so we were almost in the six o'clock news. Well, some of you, and I, I use that analogy, have never been in the six o'clock news, most of you. And uh, although we have a, a rapist or two, or a pedophile, maybe, a, a, not that kind of news. I'm talking about the financial news. Um, but you're going to be given the tools to get on the six o'clock news in a good way. You're going to be given the tools. There's 40, arguably, there's 42 financial tools out there right now. You only need one. It will be very difficult for you, but more difficult for your chairman that you recruit and your dream team that you recruit based off the back of your chairman to understand there's only one financial tool that's worth a shit. And when I discovered Andrew Carnegie in 1971-2-ish, uh, that uh, the little Scottish genius who was just down the road from us, about 40, 50 miles, uh, I never looked back. And it's the only financial tool that you're never going to be given advice by Goldman Sachs, the Bank of Scotland, J.P. Morgan, et cetera, to use. Because it's free. And there's no fees normally associated with commercial banking. There may be an overall management fee that they charge you because they need to charge you something or overall management fee. But commercial debt, if we use a financial tool, is as far as we go down the road. And those other 40 we don't use. And some of you have financial backgrounds. That'll be tougher for you to get over that, swallow that pill. But the biggest pill you have to swallow, and it's harder for the older guys, uh, the, the only gal is young, so this wouldn't apply to her, but the older guys, as you basically pissed your fucking life away so far. 20, 25, 30 years. And as I famously say, or more, uh, some people say infamously, infamously to say, you should have rolled down the, the leg of your fat mama when you were conceived. But we're going to turn that all around if you're willing to make the emotional sacrifices, if you want it bad enough, as Kansas City obviously wanted it bad enough to uh, overcome the deficit that they were coming back in the second half against the San Francisco 49ers. Any questions? Good. Duncan, hit it.